They said it couldn't be done. They said it wouldn't last. White man, black man, America F1. America F1, coming to you straight from San Francisco, California. Sherman Tillman, Michael Lawler. America F1. Yeah, PJ. Monaco. Charles did it, buddy. Charles yeah, finally he, did it. And I was, you know, gone for like a month or two on the show. Too much, you know, too much full-time job. Hey, we got to work. We got to make that money, you know? I mean. Yeah. <laughs> until this thing is bringing in some money, we got to we gotta keep working. <laughs> yeah, until this becomes a so this blows up and I'm traveling to fucking Monaco and Abu Dhabi and going in the paddock and stuff, so I got to work. But it's great to have you back, PJ. Yeah. And what a race to be back on I'm gonna let you take, I'm gonna let you take the lead here. Talk about Charles Leclerc finally winning in his home race in Monaco. Well first off, you owe me an apology for calling me a madman basically saying that Ferrari was not gonna the constructors and here we are and they're very close to Red Bull at the moment. Here we are and it's two seventy six to two fifty two for Red Bull. And Charles, uh, we have uh, Max at 169 and 138 for Max. And I'm going to say, you're right. There we go. Because I don't want to hear. Um, I, I still think that Max is probably going to win the drivers. Um, I hope he doesn't. But uh, just the way he is, he'll probably win the drivers. But I feel like Charles and Carlos have been so good this year that I feel like they're going to win the constructors. I think I think they have a really good chance if if things keep going the way they are, and Ferrari doesn't revert back to the crazy pit strategies and and the bad strategy on you know tires and and whatnot. I think they have a really good chance because I think they both can beat Checo, which is the key. As long as they both can be way ahead of Checo, and it seems that. Um, McLaren will be like playing, getting in the way of Checo and every, I th I think it's possible. I really do. Checo is, he's, he, uh, he's in P4 or P5, whatever, in the driver's championship right now. So he's he, like, I jumped by science at Orlando. He's, he's the weakest link in the top. Three teams right now, without like without a doubt, I'm not kidding. Yeah, one hundred percent. He's the weakest link out of all the 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 top teams out, out of the top three teams. He's the weakest link. You know, he's obviously behind Max. He's behind Charles Leclerc. He's behind Carlos Sainz. Now he's behind Wait, Oscar. Bruce. You know, you think he's behind? I I think he's behind Oscar at this point. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I think he's. I think Oscar's driving really well. I'm really impressed. Yeah, Oscar, he's got, he's got more consistency than Checo. Like, Checo, it's, every year, it's always the same story. Everyone's like, he comes into the sport, he does pretty good in the beginning. Like, first time he comes into the season, there he does pretty good. Everyone's like, oh my God, I looked at him, he looks so good. And like, then we get to like midway of the season and he just falls apart at the at the seams. Like, he did this like last year, the year before, and then, and then he just really, really, really struggles under pressure. He's like getting eliminated in Q1. Two two and Imola too. It's just disaster every. He's thing. never really been a good qualifier, but I just want to let's let's talk about Charles and the emotion. And it sounded like when he won, when he's crossing the finish line and they're telling him, you know, P one, P one. Sounded like he was tearing up. He was tearing up, and his when he screamed and stuff. That was like the best. Victory celebration I've ever heard anyone ever do. Of anybody. Well, I mean, when people, well, Norris's was great. I mean, his was pretty good. A lot of these guys, when they win their first race, I mean, you can't never replace that. You know, that that can never yeah, be replaced. 
emotion in his voice was the bet like so much passion so much like emotion in that he yeah. was just the best. i can't believe and, it, and even the prince was like taken aback and it looked like the prince was like kind of crying himself like he was tearing up he like because they've known each other since charles was a, a little boy you know just when he finally started getting serious in formula one or not formula one but finally started getting serious in racing and you know looking he wanted to look for some backing and i guess the prince has backed him since he was a, uh, a wee kid yeah, but now he's the the first with the second monogast driver to ever win his home grand prix and the first i think was 1933 and 31 and he was the guy who actually won was like a doorman and he he had asked one of the rich uh patrons of this uh hotel restaurant if he could back him and he put him in the car and he won <laughs> that's a crazy story so uh, Ferrari has a chance. Charles has his championship. He partied like it was Saturday night <laughs> and like nobody's business. But I, I'm so happy that he, it's Ferrari's two wins already. It's Science one. I mean, look, already we've had three different winners. We had Science, we had Leclerc, we had Norris, and last year we only had one. So already this yeah, year's had, way ahead, right? And Checo, I mean, it's science. That's all we had last year. Well, this year we already got, well, obviously, fucking Max. No one cares about that. But besides Lando and Charles, she's had three different layers. So that's, for only only with two wins is really impressive already. So. And that car that they, Checo, well, it wasn't Checo's fault. I mean, that K-Mag completely destroyed. I heard it's going to cost anywhere from 25 to three million dollars, and that goes right off the cost cap. That's a heavy hit. Hope it hits them hard and actually, you know, prevents development. Because as far as I can see, uh, Science and Charles have been very clean this year. They haven't really totaled the car at all, so or caused that much damage. Cool little things here and there, but no, no write offs like that. Did you see what that car when it, when they had the crane? And, and the crane was taking what was left of that shell up. It was, I mean, it was mangled. And how he came out of that with what the damage looked like on the screen is amazing. I mean, Formula One has come a long, long way with the technology, with the safety element. And that's one thing I think they don't get enough credit for is these drivers are really, really safe in that shell. I mean, because that car was completely, it was like, it was like paper mache and, and somebody just put it in their fist and crumpled it up and what well, that was, what was left of it. Uh, people made memes and posted on like a crumpled Red Bull can that you saw that on there. That's what, that's what it looked like. It's like a soda can that someone just crushed with their hands or stepped on. It's just destroyed. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and say it. I think Evan Madness needs to be like, Kicked out of Formula One at this point. He's driving like an absolute clown. Well, that was, we were going to talk about that later, but let's talk about He shouldn't be in the seat anymore. They should take him out of the seat and, and put somebody else in the seat. They're always talking about, you know, the poster board is obviously Lance Stroll. And then obviously they're talking about, um, who else is uh, uh, Logan Sargent, right? Obviously Logan Sargent's going to be gone. And then now they're adding Ocon to the to the wall, saying that he might get race bam and he's been talking about he wants to go somewhere else. So they're saying, well, if he wants to go somewhere else, maybe we'll just get rid of him and put Dunan in the car and get rid of him totally. But K Mag is driving like a horse's ass. I mean, he is earlier in the season, remember we uh, we put out a short saying, Who's your average Formula One driver? And I said, Kevin Magnuson. And a lot of the people out there agree with me. They're like, yeah, Kevin Magnuson. Some people said Alex Albon, but most of them said, yeah, Kevin Magnuson, Kevin. I'm taking that back. I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong. This guy shouldn't be in Formula One anymore. There's something wrong with him. I'm taking that back. 
I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong. This guy shouldn't be in Formula One anymore. There's something wrong with them. I guess I was right. Alex Albon is the average Formula One driver. Yes, you were right. That's two for you. Yeah. See, I, I know these things. I see the future. Totally lucky. Totally lucky. So I think next year, well, if you're smart, they'll, get, they'll put Oliver Behrman in there. Uh, and then the other, the other seat is completely up for debate. I mean, well, I heard Yuki, time. I heard Yuki might want to go there because he is done with Red Bull. He, it's reported that if they're not putting him in the Red Bull's, Bull seat, then he wants to go elsewhere. So they're, they've been saying he might go to Haas, but I thought Honda was Honda coming into Aston Martin next year or is it in 26, 26, right? 26. So then I can see him, I can see Fernando retiring then, and I could see him going to Aston Martin in 26. But until then, I, Haas would be a good good move for him. For now, I mean, yeah, so, don't you think? It's not, it's not it's like a draft that's the grid too far. It's like one place in the constructors, I would say. So it wouldn't be too bad. Um, Daniel and Cargo needs to go too, man. Oh my god! Like he he doesn't deserve to be in Formula One anymore. Nah, he's he's Just, yeah. You're right. He's 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 washed. Poor Dan. Poor Dan. Everyone loves him, but yeah, it's time. It's time. He, and he's made a crap load of money. I mean, no one can fault him for that. All that money he got from uh, McLaren for sitting out. I mean, he he made a, he made a boatload of money in Formula One. No one's crying for Daniel. He has a nice house in L.A. He's you know has one. No, straight. So he he's set. No no one's crying for Daniel. No one's crying for Daniel. But they were driving so slow around Monaco. I mean, they were. Charles was saying he was like three four seconds off the pace, and no one could pass. And even uh, one point, George Russell was freaking driving so slow, and Max still couldn't pass him. Right. It's that track. It's impossible to pass with the, the way the cars are right now. Not, it's not possible. They need to make the cars smaller, or there's no really, there's no really way to widen that track. So they need to make the cars smaller. No, they got to make the car smaller. You, you can't widen that track. There's nothing. It's a city track. It, all the cars would benefit other tracks too, like Miami, Azerbaijan, Singapore. So. That's that would be the better way to do it, but they're gonna keep making the cars just fatter and bigger. So I don't know what they're what they're thinking. Well, the twenty six design is supposed to be smaller, but they really should just go back to. I mean, they should speed it. They, they're they're huge. When you look at the old cars and you put it right next, I mean, there's there it's all over the internet. You can compare. You can put this the the cars from the nineties or like the early 2000s, and you put it toward this car, and it's just, it's almost twice the size, you know? Yeah, they're, they're like early 2000s cars are like, pretty sure if you put modern tires on, they'll, they're faster, too, around like a regular track. Let's talk a little bit about Oscar Piatri. One of my up-and-coming favorite drivers. I like him because he seems like a consummate professional. He doesn't complain. He does his race. He says, oh, you know what? I think I need to improve on making my tires last a little longer. I need to improve on making my tires last and getting the performance out of them, but still having, you know, performance in them near the end for my, you know, in out and my, my, my in out going into pit and just better tire management. And every time I see him, on tape when he's talking you know giving interviews solid you know could could give a little bit more personality but solid he doesn't say anything stupid seems like the consummate team player maybe not this year but i'm pretty sure lando's gonna have to watch out for him next year what do you think i'm not gonna ask you to i'm like to be honest with you like can't read off the news Three, he's just totally boring. What? He's just really lame. Like, he's got uh, personality. Yeah. What? 
You can say whatever you want. I just don't want to ask you. Uh, we uh, interrupt this uh, broadcast because somebody then fell off the chair. What are you talking about? You yourself said he's got new personality because he just got none. And I also think Lando will always be the better driver of the two. I think Lando is just that much love. What do you have to say? You're you're you've lost you you you've lost your mind. What are you talking That's, about? Are you talking about you. Oscar, the Golden Boy, the guy who finished second in Monaco? Is that who you're talking about right now? Yeah. My lord. I just I'm not a theatrical. Well, let's go right into Lewis Hamilton. We're just oh. going to get rid of that because we don't want to hear any more of this Oscar hate. We don't want to hear okay. it. We don't want to hear okay. it. We're not going to talk. Okay. We're moving okay. on to Lewis Hamilton. All right, all right. And is Lewis Hamilton the second driver now at Mercedes, PJ? Uh, on the way... The team knows he's leaving. He knows he doesn't, honestly, he doesn't give a shit anymore. He can just tell. He doesn't give a crap about Mercedes anymore. Uh, George is always so eager to plead Mercedes all the time. So they just probably were like, oh, let's just make George the number one driver now. Yeah, because he, George is getting the parts first now. And Lewis t had an interview after the race. And he kind of not only did he said, well, George is getting the parts first, so that means he's going to be 0 0.2, two tenths a uh, second faster in qualifying. And then he also said, you know, it's strange how, you know, he's really fast in practice one, practice two, because he was first in practice one, he was second in practice two, he was third in practice three, and then he's seventh in qualifying. And he's so it's he's kind of alluding to the turning down his car. I wouldn't go that far. I just, I feel like Mercedes is just, they're, they're so, they're mid, they're a midfield team now. And no one PJ, can really with it. Are you going, uh, are you drinking coffee right now? What are you doing? What? It, they, are team. they are a midfield team. But what, what did you just say before you said that? Because I agree 100% they're midfield team. But what'd you say before that? You know, I said that I don't think they're turning down his car. So what? PJ, PJ, something's, you're up on, something's going on over there. You're drinking a lot of tea, must be a lot of caffeine, because you're just out there today, and you're talking about, you don't think they're turning down his car? You think the car... Perfectly the same car that in practice three, two, and one. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, because I don't, I don't ever I look at practice and just don't hear what happens because I know practice doesn't really matter. It's never like we saw in like last couple of races, like the practice is so different from qualifying in the race. It's never, it's never the same these days. Massively complaining all, all throughout practice. All oh, the car was like shit. Car was like shit. Put, puts it on pole, but like fucking seven tenths in a second. It's like. That's the kind of shit I'm talking about. Well, I agree with that. Shit. I mean, <laughs> you're right on that. You're you're 100% right on that. I could not disagree I, I, with that. This, I get kind of like some hope that I'm like, okay, maybe something will happen. And I'm, if one's qualifying and then Max is on its whole and I check in, I'm like, okay, why did I even, why did I even get excited? But that's my practice. I just don't ignore it now. Okay. What do you think about that pit stop with it, where he told him to just go out normal instead of uh, outlet critical? It was outlet normal instead of outlet critical. Because if he went outlet critical, not only would he probably jump Max, he'd probably jump George at the same time because George would have been backing up Max. And I don't think that's what, that's why they didn't give him outlet critical because they didn't want him to jump George. What do you think about that? 
I think that's true. I mean, just wanted to protect George. And I think these are turning into Ferrari where they're making stupid kid stop errors like every weekend now. Like, I don't know what they're doing with their strategy. Just think if they were at the front, all these mistakes, we'd be calling them Ferrari, giving away wins, right? So they're not even prepared to be at the front because all these strategy blunders, all, I mean, every race is something. So with the strategy blunders, well, they've been getting the pit stops better for once. You know, they've actually been doing pretty good on the pit stops lately. So I'll give them props for that. That's about the only thing. I think as a midfield team, they were had a chance to jump a Red Bull to get two more points. So their midfield team, every point counts. That's what they should have done. Period. End of story. We don't care about your feelings, George. It's a team sport. We're trying to get as many constructor points as possible. And maybe near the end, we'll let uh, you do the switch back and Lewis will let you buy. How about that one? What do you think about that, PJ? We'll, let, we'll just... Near the end, we'll let we'll let George buy, and then you know, what do you think? I think the team is still like hurt and pissed off about Lewis leaving. They're still like bitter about that. I mean, it shows in the way that they treat him at the team at this point. But he gave him a year, PJ. He didn't give him like most Formula One dudes would have just been at the end of the season and announced, and just give you the off season. To find somebody. He gave one Lewis or Sir Lewis Hamilton gave over a year's notice. I mean, come on, PJ. Isn't that count for anything? That does, but they're they're so used to having him there. He's like their, you know, poster child. He's won them what was it, six titles and then the eight constructors. So it's like they're just, they're just so mad they're losing their golden child. And they're trying to make George like the golden child now. And well, like, George hey, will never Lewis. be that. George will never be. <laughs> he'll never be that. George will. I don't, I don't think George even wins one championship, to be honest. I don't think so either. George is, George is extremely overhyped, or he was as a driver. Like, sure, he's won one race, but um, like, we've, had, we've seen other drivers now. He leads to doubt, like, science now as a multiple race winner. Like, George should be at that level, but he's not. So. I agree. Yeah, that's right. I don't like George, you know, like he's going to be the world champion, the world champion. But even in the midfield car, he's not showing like that that raw talent that anymore. Like he he was for a while, like at the Williams, and then all of a sudden he's just gotten he's kind of just been stuck in this like like good but not great state right now. And so he's at that is a perfect quote for George. He's good, but he's not great. PJ, you're out, okay, right? You know, you were you were out there for a while, in my opinion, and then these last three, you just hit it out the park. You know, you were out you're hitting a lot of foul balls, and then all of a sudden, the ball just cart stroking out into left field, and it was gone. It's <laughs> now, is Esteban Ocon out of Alpine? Is he going to get a race ban? This 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 is something I've been wanting to talk about because I think if Alpine drops Ocon, they're or they're already the biggest clowns on the grid this year, but they're going to be the whole circus if they get rid of Ocon. Like Ocon may be like clumsy a little bit, and like he gets a little bit over, he goes over the line a lot with his teammates and other drivers. But he's a very and actually I think very talented driver. Like if they get rid of him, that's a huge blow to their team in my mind. Wow. He does go over the line with teammates, I think. I think he's really remember for what, what every teammate would with uh Alonzo and who was his other teammate? Was it, it wasn't Ricardo, was it? Who was his other teammate? Yeah, Ricardo was, was his teammate for one yeah, season, I think. Yeah, so and he was very, very, very like in people's way with both of them. And that's just how he is. Um but he was Two years, too. Way, way back. Fourth India. And then he's, you know, him and Gasly aren't friends. I mean, they've known each other for kids and they didn't like each other. So this is, you know, it's not like they'll do the PR stuff, but other than that, they don't like each other. So 
maybe, yeah, maybe it's time for Ocon to go. I, I do think he's a good driver. I just don't think he seems to be a good teammate. So, yeah, let him go somewhere else. I mean, it's a driver's market. They didn't get somebody just as good, I think, or better. Maybe they go back and get Valtteri. I'd love to see Valtteri get off of that dog of a car into something at least better. Wouldn't wouldn't you? I was like, oh, sorry. He's like, that's like his team, though. Like, he's been there for so long. Like, I just, it's like Lewis and Mercedes for me. It's like, they should always be together. But yeah, I mean, if Alton, Alpine see that they want to get rid of him and they do it, and I guess Valtteri is probably the best choice. Science would be the best, but science would be stupid to go to Alpine. Alpine is a fucking disaster. So, no, no, he needs to go to Audi and just get over it. Just go, you know, just get going. We would be honored if you would join us. Then we already talked about K Mag. So the next race is in oh, Canada. No, that's where it's at. I've been to that yeah, race. Canada. Yeah, it's a good race, actually. I was there. Really good track. Yeah, great track. A lot of walking, though. To get from that subway to where your seats are, man, it's like a mile, mile and a half. I'm damn uphill. Or I was like, dang, how far is it? Seats, you know, <laughs> not like they had a shuttle or anything. But I think uh, Red Bull will be probably a favorite to win the race. What do you think, PJ? I think the Red Bull downfall is upon us. I think this is the Beginning of the end for Red Bull, I think that uh, the car, I think Ferrari and McLaren will outdevelop Red Bull this from going forward. I think that they will lose the Constructors Championship due to Checo and being outdeveloped. And I think in the years going forward, they will like the third or fourth best team due to Adrian Dewey leading the team. Wow. Now that is a prediction. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah. I'm hoping, I'm hoping all of those come through. I mean, each and every one of them. I want all that to come true. <laughs> yeah. I, a lot of people love them on their way up. And I think even more are going to love them on the way down. You know, and that's, that's one campfire you want to be at. I think that for our. Yeah. Well, I think we got synced out and lost PJ. I don't know what happened. He's not on the... He got dropped off of uh, the cast on the roadcaster that we used. So that was about it for the show. And let me see if I can reconnect him really quickly because he had one thing to say. And then we can... Are you there now, PJ? PJ? No? Well, that's it for... That's it for... Another episode of America F1 as we conclude our Monica Grant pre review now after that keep on racing everybody ladies and gentlemen can i please have your attention i've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story and i need all of you to stop what you're doing 